start with today's presentation without any delay. I would like to just uh, address uh, and speak about our speaker for a few minutes. Mr. Govind Mahadev Lele has about 43 years of experience in which he has worked in, for 17 years with various consultants in Bahrain and in Dubai and has worked with various contractors in Dubai and Balance as the, in Voltas Limited in Mumbai, Ahmedabad, Pune for four years. He has been retired from the year 2014 from Voltas Domestic Project Division, Pune as a deputy project, deputy general manager design in the capacity of the head of engineering and design team. After retirement from Volta since April 2014, he has been associated as a consultant with Sividaman College of Engineering Bhuvaneshwar for the Sividaman Center of Institute and Excellence and the Refrigeration Project. He was associated with Volta's, he was also associated as a consultant with Volta's Limited ENM Projects, DPG Kochi, and has held many projects in their tenure. As an Ishre, he has been part of the Ishre Institute of Excellence and is a certified trainer in this ICP and ICPS course for module one and three. He has developed specific training documents for training in CAD designs for the drawing preparation for HVAC and MEP coordination. We are very much lucky to have Mr. Govind Mahadeo Lele today for us uh, to enrich us on the psychometric presentation to, so that we can be more enriched in our day-to-day -day operations and day-to-day -day lives. Uh, I hand over the podium to Mr. Govind Mahadeo Lele, sir. And the stage is all yours, sir. Kindly help us out and understand the basics. Uh, in the meantime, uh, just for the participants, if there is any questions, please enter your questions in the Q&A session. We will address them as per the time and as per Govind sir's uh, position. We can address it in between, sir, also, or at the end of the presentation as per your convenience. So whenever you want to address the question, just let me know. Recording in progress. Uh, those questions as well. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. It's a great opportunity for me to share a little bit of knowledge of air conditioning field, which I have with the group. And let me start with the very fundamental or basic. When we are talking about air conditioning as an industry, we all know that we are going to deal with the elements and we are going to have air as one of the first element which we have to deal with. And since we are going to deal with the air, it's always better to know the properties of air before we go any further. So the presentation I have prepared for Ishray youth members, as well as the young professionals, and the title is Basics of Psychrometry. I have added with applications as a part for basic HVAC because just understanding the psychrometry will be just understanding like addition and subtraction. But unless we have the application known in the field, it will be of no use. So let's continue on that. What is psychrometry? Now, this is a dictionary meaning or derived from the mechanical engineering part. This is a noun as it is said, and psychrometry is the study of thermodynamics of gas and vapor mixture. Now, when we talk about this gas and vapor mixture, air around us, we all know about the composition of all the gases, nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and the water vapor, which is the most challenging component of the air mixture. And that's why you will be hearing a term dry air and mixture because it is mixed with the water vapor. So psychrometry is a study of properties of moist air. The moment we use the moist air word, it means it contains moisture and it is useful to the engineers concerned with heating, cooling and ventilation, ventilating the buildings, which is our HVAC or field. And psychrometry is a subject which deals with the properties of gas vapor mixtures, repetition of this, properties and thermodynamics. And then this is what is the study. Now, psychrometrics, as distinct from psychometrics, is the study of thermodynamic properties of air vapor mixtures, typically focusing with the interrelation between the temperature, partial pressure, and enthalpy. Now, when we talk about enthalpy, we know that. This is a mixture of gas and vapor. 
and gases forming the part of the air have certain amount of enthalpy and remaining is by the moisture or the water vapor and uh, it has been or being assumed for the most uh, range for air conditioning engineers that the majority of the enthalpy is contributed by the water vapor and that's the reason why many uh, industries uh, professionals they take wet bulb as an indication for the enthalpy level we'll continue now for the fresh graduates or coming just out of the college they are quite familiar with this diagram which is called a molier diagram it gives all the properties of air in a manner similar to the psychrometric chart which the hvac professionals are more familiar with all the data which you find in this molier diagram only difference is the orientation what we are used to see as a psychrometric chart in that particular format or the shape is different but the data will be exactly identical the reason for my presenting this slide is to know that yes the fresh engineers know the molier diagram and they will have to convert their application with the psychrometric chart which most of the hvac professionals will be talking about but basically we are talking about properties of air and it is identical to that now this is a sample outline psychrometric chart which gives the properties of air now the description here is the psychrometric chart is an attempt to show the relationships in many of the properties of moist air the chart shows all of the following properties namely dry bulb temperature which is this vertical line dry bulb temperature wet bulb temperature which is this blue line which we see relative humidity is that curve dew point temperature here saturation line humidity ratio which is here moisture content and total heat or enthalpy and the specific volume which is this line now when we see let me try to put the uh, mouse only because i had a marker before which is not working somehow i don't know okay so total heat enthalpy and a specific volume so these are all properties which you can see on the outline chart now many of the hvac professionals they consider the enthalpy line and the wet bulb line as point concurrent but which is not the case at the high temperatures especially you have a problem you have a higher variation and it is different the lines are deviating from each other we will see it in the uh, software which is more clear but here you see a dotted line which is the enthalpy and this thick line is the wet bulb line now this is another copy of the psychrometric schematic which is from ashray now here what we find is this is a schematic it tells you the dry bulb temperature scale which is a horizontal or x axis the relative humidity or the humidity ratio we always have this relative humidity as a curved line which is changing we will see it further in the detailed chart but that is the relative humidity line are you able to see the uh, cursor sir because i was not able to put the pointer cursor is seen sir we can see the cursor but the pointer as you said is not being shown but we can see the cursor okay so uh, if i am moving this cursor you will be able to look at because right, i sir. had a red highlighter before which somehow is not working i don't know why uh, i don't know sir might be some okay now this is the humidity ratio that is the scale which is a y axis which is on the extreme right end now these are the enthalpy scale wet bulb scale now here you will see the enthalpy line not 
identical or coincident with the wet bulb line, there is a deviation. And then you have this dew point temperature, which is dictated by the humidity ratio or the moisture content. And that is a saturation line. And then that is the dry bulb line. So we'll see further in details, but this is how the schematic or the skeleton chart is. Now I have presented this as a ASHRAE chart, which is a maze of lines, vertical, horizontal, inclined, circular, uh, curved. But this is the chart which is very helpful in analyzing the performance. Now, as we have seen, there is a start point, which is the dry bulb temperature and the end point and there are various charts available. They call this chart one, chart two, depending on the range of the temperatures. It also is available for different altitudes and range of temperature, depending on the specific area which you are looking at for the properties. Now, this is an important slide, I would say, because when we are talking about properties of air, we have seen in the previous slide, what are the properties we are looking at? Dry bulb, wet bulb temperature, relative humidity, humidity ratio, specific volume, dew point temperature, enthalpy and vapor pressure. In this, what we do not see is the absolute humidity, which is in terms of grains or grams per cubic feet or per cubic meter volume rarely used, but sometimes the consultants do specify <coughs> that as a parameter. Now, these are the properties listed. So the psychrometric chart provides values of the properties of air as listed, which are this. This chart is unitary type. This is something which we need to understand. What is the meaning of the unitary? So the properties namely the humidity ratio, specific volume and enthalpy. These properties of air are per unit mass. So if it is a IP system, it will be per pound. And if it is a SI system, it will be per cubic uh, per kg. Now the properties which are dry bulb temperature, wet bulb temperature, relative humidity and dew point temperature. These are all independent of mass of the air. Now, why we are trying to understand this as a unitary type chart is most of our calculations done for heat load or cooling load demand have a direct relation like the heat to be removed, the rate of heat to be removed is always decided by the mass flow rate. So we are concerned with the mass flow rate, the temperature difference or the enthalpy difference. And then what we are talking about is equating that whenever we work out the cooling load or cooling demand as capacity required of the AC system, we are always talking about either in tons of refrigeration or kilowatt. So that is the rate of heat removal. And for getting that rate of heat removal, we need to circulate certain amount of air in terms of pounds or kilograms. And that is what will give us the desired effect. So how many cubic feet per minute or liters per second or cubic meter per hour is the circulation rate for the air has to be worked out. And that's where the psychrometric analysis helps us. Now, to get the properties of air, all these properties, you will need a laboratory if you have to weigh the mass of the air. Suppose we have a room of three meter by five meter and uh, two meter height. The volume is calculated. And if you have to weigh that sample of air, it is impossible practically. And that's where you have this benefit that 
using the sling psychrometer, the dry bulb and wet bulb temperature will be measured, which is very easy. Simple instruments are used. And using these two data or two parameters, we take them to the psychrometric chart and you get all the remaining properties because that air sample is pinpointed with these two properties and the rest of the properties are easily available or can be computed. So that's the beauty of the psychrometric chart and that's the most helpful tool, I would say, in understanding the HVAC requirements. Now in the presentation, you will find I have tried to take details from Carrier, which is one of the leading air conditioning uh, suppliers, manufacturers, and in fact, the Carrier has been the pioneers for the AC system or refrigeration system. And other system is ASHRAE. Uh, there are certain government or ministerial uh, clients or agencies who do not accept carrier method because they are known as contractors or manufacturers. And in the international market, what I have faced is the moment you say I am using carrier method, they say you are getting bias towards carrier. And in that case, we have to use ASHRAE, which is an internationally or, uh, accepted organization and all their standards are followed. So there is no dispute. So what I would try to do is get both the systems understood. There is a slight difference in the two, the way they work or they present or explain. So my effort is to show both methods and you will be able to get the similarities and what are the differences or where the differences are. Basically, you will find the same skeleton chart with the boundaries here. This line as our saturation line or wet bulb, the uh, line which you see here is the boundary. That is a dry bulb temperature from left to right increasing. That is your humidity, relative humidity, dew point. All those parameters are in this. Now the explanation here is about the enthalpy values, deviations. Here it says that wet bulb and enthalpy line they are concurrent for the range of temperatures we work for normal air conditioning. And that's why that approximation is done. For a higher accuracy, you will have to go in a different way, which is the ASHRAE uh, style. Now here you will find one alignment circle, which is in the middle of the chart. And then you will find a sensible heat ratio as the calibration. We will come to that in a moment, but that is where the difference is. In the carrier chart, you will find the alignment circle in the middle of the chart, which is already confusing with so many lines and curves. And there is a scale here for the sensible heat factor. And in the ASHRAE, you will find it different. Here, you go back to the ASHRAE chart, you find there is no alignment circle or a scale on this. That is here. So the sensible heat factor or sensible heat ratio is here. Horizontal is one. And as you go down, it is reducing. So that is the difference between the carrier chart and the ASHRAE chart. Continuing. This is the properties of air using the software. Now you will find that difference. This is a software and it is a very helpful tool. Again, this is available from Carrier as a software. Here you will find both units are available, either SI or IP. So you can have an inch pound or a, a SI metric system. And the parameters are listed here, which we have taken from the previous slides. And the moment you move the cursor within the chart area, when you are using the software, the particular position of the cursor, what are the properties of air will be depicted here. And then you will be able to get the accuracy for enthalpy lines as well, when you are using the software. Now that is the properties of air available from the software. I have just tried to enlarge that. 
So the screenshot on the left is showing the properties of air available in the SI metric unit. Here you see SI in red color. And in this slide side, you see it IP as red color. So all these properties listed here are related to IP units. Whereas in this, they are all related to SI units. The property which I was mentioning is not very commonly used it was here. This is the gray grams per cubic meter. This is the absolute humidity. Rarely used parameter in the specifications, but there are certain uh, industries which do specify this. So that is the data available from the software, which gives you accurate, because when you are doing the reading from the chart manually, there are certain approximations. You will take it as halfway, then take 0.5, or somebody might take it as 0.4 or 0.6. So that accuracy will be slightly different, but this will give you exactly the calculated values because all the software has that provision. Now, what we had seen before is measuring the air conditioning system performance. So psychrometric chart as a tool to check the air handling unit performance and the capacity. So these are the two tools which are very simple to use and the uh, skill level required to take these measurements is not very high. So we have AC mechanics who can check the dry bulb and wet bulb temperature using this link psychrometer. And that is the anemometer, which will measure the air velocity. So to compute the plant capacity and determine or evaluate the performance of the AC system or the plant, simple instruments like sling psychrometer and the anemometer are used. Air velocity across the air handling unit filters is measured with the anemometer. Then you have the square feet area of the filter or square meter, and then you can calculate the air flow rate. The dry bulb temperature and wet bulb temperature at the inlet and outlet of the air handling unit will be measured using this sling psychrometer. And then by using the psychrometric chart, you will find the enthalpy values of air entering and air leaving. And then you have the HO capacity, which can be computed using the air flow rate and the enthalpy values, because that's what is the data required to calculate. So you have a very simple set of instruments and you can calculate the capacity or check the performance with your design parameters. Now we have seen those properties of air which are listed. Now you see here that is showing the dry bulb temperature lines. You see all the vertical lines, red lines. They are all dry bulb lines increasing from left to right. So as you go for a higher temperature, your uh, point will be at a right side. So that is the dry bulb temperature lines. This is the absolute humidity, which is the moisture content. Now the moisture content will be per unit mass. So if it is in IP system, it will be grains per pound or pounds per pound. Grain is a smaller unit of the pound. So 7,000 grains is taken as one pound or it could be grams per kilogram or kilograms per kilogram. But this LB per LB, pound per pound or kilogram per kilogram will give you a few zeros after the decimal. And then there are possibilities of error while you calculate. That's why the smaller unit is given, grains or grams. So 7,000 means when you are working within your normal chart, you'll be having numbers like 70, 90, or 120. It will not be 0.006 or 0 0.0008 which will confuse you while you make the calculations. So that is the absolute humidity lines. So that is the humidity or the moisture level in the air increasing upwards. So those are the humidity ratios, absolute humidity. That is the wet bulb temperature. Here what you see the yellow lines, which are inclined. These are the wet bulb lines. So they will be the indication of the 
wet bulb condition or the parameter of the sample air. Saturation curve is the curve which is the boundary of the psychrometric chart, which is the 100% saturation or 100% relative humidity. And this line or the curve, saturation curve, is important because that is the end of the sample air. It can go beyond this. If you use the software, you will see and you take the cursor beyond that saturation line, you will get a condition as fog, which means it is more than 100% humidity. So that's the saturation line curve. These are the relative humidity lines, which are having the shape curves, something parallel to this, but not exactly parallel. They are deviating. And this relative humidity is actually a measure of the actual sample content moisture versus what it can hold when it is 100% saturated. So that is, suppose you have a dry bulb temperature here, and at this, you can hold the moisture at that level. Sample is at this point. So it is so much percent of the maximum value of saturation. So that is why it is called a relative humidity, whereas the absolute humidity is the moisture contained directly. Dew point temperature is one of the important parameters to understand. This dew point temperature is the temperature at the saturation curve, which means it is 100% saturation, and it is a function of the moisture content. So if that is the value of the moisture content, you have this line horizontally drawn and meet the saturation line, which means it is 100% saturated. So for this moisture level in the air as a sample, the dew point will be here. As the moisture level is higher, you see here, this is higher than this. So the dew point is higher. So as you have more moisture in the air, the dew point of that air will be higher. What it means is the condensation will start occurring at a higher temperature. Now, if you imagine a situation where you take a glass of water plain, you will not find any condensation on the surface. You add a small piece of ice or a cube of ice in that water and allow it to melt, the water will get cold and then the surface temperature of the glass will lower and then suddenly at one point of time you will start condensation or water accumulation, vapor accumulation. So that is the dew point temperature, which is what is the meaning that that temperature will be dictated by the moisture content. And this is one important parameter to understand. Now, after having seen the uh, main parameters, which we are using, one of them is a specific volume, which we'll see later, where that, uh, because we are going to measure the volume of air, flow rate of air in terms of feet or cubic meter per second, it is important to convert that to mass flow rate and for which you use the parameter, that specific volume, and then get the mass flow rate because we are interested in the heat exchange rate, not the amount of heat, not the quantity of heat. So this is the understanding of basic air conditioning processes. Now, what we have seen so far on the chart is a single point which tells you the properties of air by measuring the dry bulb and wet bulb, you will be able to find out the remaining properties like the enthalpy, the dew point, the relative humidity, as well as the specific volume. Now, when we're talking about using the air conditioning apparatus and we want to treat the air, what we have to do is, so what we're trying, uh, trying to understand is when the air flows through or over, any air conditioning apparatus, there are changes in the properties. Driver temperature will change, humidity ratio will change, and enthalpy will change apart from the cleanliness. When we talk about cleanliness, it is a function of the filtration system. 
and these changes relate humidity dbt and enthalpy these changes are generally described as processes so when we say air conditioning process we are passing the air over air conditioning apparatus or through air conditioning apparatus be it a window ac or a split ac or air handling unit you will have a set of equipment or apparatus within that and it will change these parameters now let's see what are the processes which we come in uh, everyday applications so assume that this is the point so initial condition of the air marked at this point on that chart and this point on this chart the sensible heating is the air conditioning process which will change the driable temperature it will increase the driable temperature as the heat is added so you will have the temperature rise and since it is sensible heating there is no addition of moisture which means the line of the moisture content will remain same there will be no change in moisture content it is only increasing the temperature the uh, converse if it is sensible cooling you are only removing sensible heat there is no moisture removal and the temperature will start dropping which is a sensible cooling line then you have heating and dehumidifying actually this should have been humidifying because you are adding moisture and adding heat so the temperature is increasing as well as humidity is increasing and opposite of that is here cooling and dehumidifying so from that initial start point of the initial condition of that air from here you are trying to cool there is a reduction in driver temperature as well as you are removing the moisture so there is a dehumidification as well as sensible cooling this is most common of the air conditioning processes then you have this evaporative cooling which is going along the wet bulb line so that is the wet bulb temperature and as the efficiency is more you achieve higher relative humidity and there is a conversion from the sensible heat to latent heat so the enthalpy level doesn't change but you are increasing the percentage humidity relative humidity and there is a decrease in driver temperature so these are basically the processes in this side what you see is the same initial point and the processes are explained with the point so if you connect from the initial point to line a it is a humidifying only practically this is not possible but but this is only adding moisture probably if you add steam but even when you add steam the driver temperature also rises so b is heating and humidifying which should have been here heating and humidifying this line c is the sensible heating only so all the same processes but depicted in a slightly different style here they have identified from the starting point various points the direction so from the given sample air if you add heat sensible heat then it moves on this direction which is sensible heating so that's the meaning of these processes so basic psychrometric process the first process here you see that we are having the sample air at point a which has this driver temperature and this enthalpy level and the sensible heating process we are adding sensible heat there is no change in the moisture content it remains unchanged so it is moving on the horizontal line the change is only in the driver temperature and that's how it is shown that is the apparatus which we are talking about the symbol inside is plus which means had addition of heat that arrow shows the air movement over the apparatus and at the inlet and outlet so that is the inlet and that is the outlet temperature increasing which is the sensible heating process second process is sensible cooling which is now making from the point a which is your starting point to point b 
there is no change in the moisture content you are not dehumidifying or removing moisture you are only removing the sensible heat so this is the horizontal line without changing moisture content and the way it is shown as a process sensible cooling this rectangle is the apparatus the circle showing the minus sign means you are removing the heat and that is the entering and that is the leaving which is entering and leaving and that is the delta t or the temperature difference that is the process of cooling sensible cooling now steam humidification starting from a to b you are adding steam with the jets so that is the process you are having a ducted connection you are passing air over the steam humidifier so you are adding heat sensible as well as moisture is being added so there is a change in moisture content as well as change in the type bulb so there is the steam humidification process most common for conditioning is sensible and latent cooling so which would be cooling and dehumidification so you are having the starting point as a which has this double temperature and this moisture content corresponding enthalpy what is entering here on the apparatus that is the apparatus there you see the symbol with minus means you are having a heat removal here it is also showing a tray here and a few drops falling the indication is you are removing moisture which is getting condensed over this cooling coil and dropping out as a condensate so you are getting out a cooled remove sensible heat as well as dehumidified removing the latent heat or the moisture content and that's your point where you are having and the sensible heat ratio which i was talking about in the earlier slide is that ratio that slope which is the proportion of the sensible heat removal to the total heat removal we'll see further more about it but that is most commonly deployed process in our air conditioning applications now this starting point how it is computed this leaving point how it is calculated is something which we we'll have to see as an application the next process is the adiabatic humidification there is no change in the enthalpy but you are changing the point entering at a with this dry bulb and this moisture content and moving along the wet bulb line you are having a spray you are adding moisture to the air stream so that is the apparatus in this case for this adiabatic humidification and the moisture gets added and it cools the pro in the process that air which is moving over so there is a reduction in the dry bulb temperature but increase in the moisture content this will be your desert cooler application or air washer application in the textile industry is very commonly used now the next process we talk about is a mixing air streams now this is one of the common process in the air conditioning because we always have a recirculated air mixed with the outside air or the fresh air in the proportion of the design requirements so there are two air streams mixing together so if you have a stream a which is say air coming from the conditioned space and that is the amount of fresh air getting added so that is getting mixed this point so a is your ambient or outdoor air b is the room air getting mixed now when you are mixing you have this line joined and depending on the proportion of the outdoor air to the recirculated air you will have this mixture point here now as i said initially when we are talking about only the dry bulb and wet bulb condition of the air as a sample suddenly we get this mixture condition plotted in this manner it is calculating the air quantity 
and balancing the flow rates because we are interested in the heat removal rate of heat removal that's where it gets changed so that is the starting point mixture so if you have no return air no room air 100% fresh air that means the mixture will be there because there is no return air 100% fresh air whereas you have no fresh air you have 100% recirculated air the mixture condition will get here if you have 50 50 it will be half way here so depending on the percentage of fresh air in the total air the point m which is the mixture condition will be changed so this is mixing of air stream there is no change in the enthalpy what changes is only the operating temperatures of the and the moisture level because it is getting average of the mixture calculations will see it so that is the commonly used and here you see the psychrometry the two streams are mixed the same example as previous this process is applicable when air from conditioned air return air is mixed with outdoor air is mixed and before entering the coil air handling unit so that will go to the air handling unit the mixture of the outdoor air and the return air so the desired conditions are plotted on the single points and then depending on the percentage as we said this will become now since most of the air conditioning equipment is selected based on the rate of heat removal or rate uh, rate of heat addition it becomes necessary to use the volume flow rate and then convert it to mass flow rate to calculate the system capacity so you have the air flow rates you will hear the word cfm cfm most of the time whenever you are uh, having a discussion with ac engineers it could be liters per second or cmh meter cube per hour but that's basically the flow rates and then you have to use that specific volume to convert it to the mass flow rate because all your heat equations are dictated or dependent on the mass flow rates now that's the example of the psychrometric process numbers are given here so they are talking about 30 degrees c dry bulb with 22.5 wet bulb which will be this point going to this point and how the air flow rate is calculated and how the capacity is calculated but understanding the basic process is the same now we come to one important aspect after having understood the psychrometric chart and the process of mixing the airs how we are going to select the equipment now equipment selection process there is a carrier system design manual and ashre load calculation manual so the process is described here here you find equipment selection this is the extract from carrier after the load is evaluated the equipment must be selected with capacity sufficient to offset this load you have done the load calculation and now you have to select the capacity of the plant which has to offset this load the air supplied to the space must be of proper conditions to satisfy both the sensible and latent loads estimated now there is a chapter 8 which is applied psychrometrics which provides the procedure and example for determining the criteria from which the air conditioning equipment is selected so that air conditioning equipment parameters will be air quantity apparatus dew point etc so air quantity or the air flow rate or the cfm or the meter cube per hour of the air handling unit and the apparatus dew point so we have learnt about the dew point this is the temperature at which the moisture in the air starts condensing that is the surface temperature so the apparatus has to be maintained at that dew point temperature and we will see further how the apparatus dew point is checked or calculated so that is the carrier system method this is from the ashray load calculation similar statement but the method is slightly different after the cooling and heating loads are calculated these loads must be picked up and 
apply to specific system to be able to select proper equipment one of the most useful tools available for this step is the psychrometric chart the psychrometric processes which we have uh, tried to understand and the calculations can provide the data for the equipment selection so this will tell you what capacity equipment is required some examples are given that's a part of the book the list below shows the factors now here you will find that air leaving the coil at about 90% rh is assumed so that is the assumption and here there is no assumption there is a apparatus dew point so that is the difference between the ash ray and carrier methods we'll see further in details now this is a typical uh, load calculation form which is the e20 form very popular in uh, indian air conditioning market carrier system design so the image shows carrier e20 load estimation sheet or a form which is most popular and widely accepted by clients consultants contractors similar form is available in ishre data book also this form is used with various parameters in inch pound units now we we'll have to remember that hvac industry having american influence has the units being followed in us local market it is all inch pound and that's why most of the hvac engineers will be talking about uh, square feet and cubic feet per minute and gallons per minute and tons of repetition so that's the reason why these are all in inch pound units the cooling load values are obtained in btu per hour so this is british thermal unit per hour what we calculate if it is si metric will be in watts which is joules per second so joules will be equivalent to btu and per second the time factor comes from hr to seconds the air quantities are obtained in cubic feet per minute using this form and the calculations and the leaving conditions of the air have to be determined based on the psychrometric analysis so we'll have to go to the psychrometric chart and do that analysis for the process how much air quantity is required is calculated so the purpose of this form is just to identify okay we have calculated the load we have calculated the btu per hour required of the system and the air quantity and another factor is a sensible heat factor which we'll see in the further slides so this is the part 1 of the calculation sheet this takes you to the room sensible heat and the effective room sensible heat the <coughs> sorry the details of exposed walls glass partition walls have to be taken from the building drawings u values are to be calculated so that's a part of the heat load calculation solar radiation through glass is calculated equivalent temperature differences for the walls have to be taken from various tables internal heat gains is to be computed so after doing all this exercise you get this solar gain solar plus transmission internal all this is the room sensible heat and the effective room sensible heat with the bypass factor and that's the difference with the ashray method they don't have this part they have only up to here sensibility factor they don't have the bypass factor and that okay so that is the part of the sensible heat calculated or anticipated for the space this is the outdoor air and ambient ambient condition and the room design conditions are taken from this ventilation calculated from this infiltration infiltration also is calculated and then the outdoor air quantity is decided using these values so that's a part of the load calculation so you know the outdoor air or a fresh air to be added you know the sensible heat to be removed then you have this room sensible you have seen before this is the room latent heat room latent loads are calculated occupancy equipment and appliances effective room latent also is calculated and then you have the outdoor heat because you know the outdoor air quantity you know the ventilation rates as we have seen in the previous slide so you know the outdoor air heat you know the room latent heat 
room, you know the room effective, effective room latent heat. So all these values are known. And then you get this grand total heat, which is the sum. And this value is the total load for which your plant or system is to be selected. Now comes the apparatus dew point. So there is a part of that same chart or the uh, form which we saw, you have these entries, apparatus dew point, indicated ADP and selected ADP. Then you get this dehumidified air quantity. So the moment you have used the word dehumidified, this is the cooled and dehumidified air. So that is the quality of air which you get from the dew point table. And then you have to use the air quantity and that's where you will get the selection of the equipment. So apparatus dew point is to be selected using the ADP table for the room design condition and the ESHF calculated, effective sensible heat factor calculated. Indicated ADP is for specific space, while selected ADP may be different if the chill water system is used. If you have a common system, which is supplying chill water to various air handling units, it's not necessary that all the spaces have the same ADP because it is dictated by the room design temperature and the space uh, sensible heat factor. Then you have to use uh, selected ADP based on the chilled water, indicated ADP, this could be different. Using the room sensible load and the dehumidified temperature rise value, you calculate the supplier quantity. And this is forming the performance data for selection of the air handling unit. So, we have seen that from calculation of the load for the space, how to go to the performance requirements, which is your grand total heat, what is the total capacity, how much is the air quality, what, what should be the air quality, that's your ADP, and then air quantity, and then comes the bypass factor, we'll see further. And there is also a factor of sensible heat factor. So this is a sample of the ADP table. So this is effective sensible heat factor ESHF and apparatus dew point table taken from carrier system design. You have the room conditions. So I have picked up only one sample as the room condition, popular 76 degrees Fahrenheit. So you will find this all units in IP units now. You have a range of humidity from 35 to 70 in steps of 5%. So 76 degrees with 35, 40, 45 as a percentage RH. Corresponding wet bulb temperature is given. So the combination of this room dry bulb and the percentage RH, you get this wet bulb and the W, which is the grains per pound or the humidity ratio, which is here. Depending on effective sensible heat factor, the ADP is dictated. So you have a table, so you will be able to select the apparatus dew point based on the effective sensible heat factor which you have calculated for the space for the given room design conditions. So that's how they get linked with each other. Now we'll see further what are the effects. What I've done here is I have taken 76 degrees as the room dry bulb temperature, which has humidity changing, relative humidity from 35 to 70% in steps of five. And I have selected effective sensible heat factor as a sample, which is one, which means all the heat to be removed is sensible. There is no moisture removal required required in the particular application. Maybe this is true for many of the server rooms. It could be up to 98% or 99%. I have taken one just to understand what is the effect. So the table on the left is showing the apparatus dew point or ADP temperature for this room design condition. It will be seen that the ADP has to be lower to maintain the lower RH 
for the same effective room sensible heat so if you have the humidity as say 60% which is here the adp required is 61.1 but if you want to maintain the humidity as 40% you will have to operate the apparatus at 49.9 degrees fahrenheit you see from 61.1 to 49.9 is almost 11 degrees difference which means for the system where you want the lower humidity to be maintained you will have to operate the system apparatus at a lower temperature so the selected adp has an impact of operating the refrigerant temperature and corresponding pressure for dx system or a chill water system which will be much lower so it is important to know what is the adp or what is the surface temperature of the apparatus to ensure that you are maintaining the desired quality of air to be supplied now in simple terms what it will mean is when you are design humidity is say 40% what you are looking for is a lower moisture level in the room now that will be a particular point on the psychrometric chart so unless you supply the air which has the moisture content lower than the heat uh, the air being uh, supplied then you will have a problem otherwise if you supply the air having higher moisture content you will never be able to achieve the desired room condition that's why you have to check what is the selected or what is the indicated adp and your refrigeration system has to be uh, depending on that you have to select those operating temperatures so this is sample with the effective sensible heat factor as one what is the effect of the changing in design relative humidity now let's see the other part so let's see the effect of change in the relative uh, effective sensible heat factor for the given humidity so this will be showing 76 degrees fahrenheit driver temperature with 50 and 55% rh and effective heat sensible heat factor changing from 1 to 0.63 or 0.6 so 1.93.83.77.73 so these are the values of the effective heat sensible heat factor and for 55% also similar way the above table is showing the apparatus dew point temperatures or adp for the room design 76 with relative humidity 50% and 55% and these are the values now you will see that the adp temperature is lower as the sensible heat factor is reducing if you have a effective sensible heat factor of 1 you will be selecting 56.2 but if it was 0.69 0.69 you will have to operate at 46 imagine a situation where you are having a chill water temperature of 44 and you are expecting a adp of 46 how taxable taxing the coil selection will be so if you have a lower sensible heat factor it means that the proportion of latent or the amount of latent heat to be removed is substantial and you have to operate the apparatus at a temperature low enough to ensure the condensation or removal of moisture to the required degree so the selected adp has an impact on the operating the refrigerant temperature and pressure for a dx system and in central chill water system the temperature of water leaving the chill water will be dictating the adp now suppose you have already got a chill water system where we are talking about 45 and 55 or 44 and 54 depends on the design so these are very commonly used temperatures so if you are having the uh, chill water temperature set already and you get 
some spaces having a lower sensible heat factor demanding a lower adp to be maintained then you will have to be extra careful in the selection of the coil you have to make sure that you are able to achieve that performance otherwise you will not be able to achieve that kind of relative humidity because you will not be having that capacity of moisture removal now we'll come to the uh, sensible heat factor on the chart now here what i have done is like i said yes i have been associated with the cv raman college and we had procured the psychrometric chart or the analysis software so this is the product from that software where you see the sensible heat ratio as a circle outside it has a program it, it has a provision you have to select the room point so i have selected this room point and i have added the sensible heat ratio as 0.82 here and 0.6 here so what it does is that 0.82 is linked or joined with this center point here and then a line is drawn and then a line is drawn parallel to that sensible heat ratio factor and passing through the room design point same in this it is 0.6 so you see you are having the slope like that now such exercise of drawing a line parallel to the sensible heat factor line on a chart manually you get a instrument which is like a set square i'll just show you that how it looks like this is the slide rule or the sliding scale so you use this edge parallel on this line you put that matching on this line and just move the roller and move this scale on the psychrometric chart and then pass through this point which will draw that line exactly parallel to this otherwise you will have to use a set of set squares and keep moving and in that process there is a likelihood that it will get slipped and the angle will change which means the sensible heat factor which is required will not be same when you reach here now what you see here as the sensible heat factors this is the uh, feature of the software now see this is the room design condition here i have taken 75 55 75 degrees fahrenheit driver temperature and 55% rh that is the point and what i have done is i have tried to select the adps depending on the sensible heat factor which was available from the table which we saw some time back so horizontal line means sensible heat factor of 1 which means the line is horizontal the end entire amount of heat to be removed is sensible so the image is showing the room design at this 7555 assuming 100% coil efficiency i am assuming 100% asre says 90% carrier says you have to use the bypass factor calculation and then determine that uh, leaving point or off coil condition and these are plotted for 1 to 0.63 all these adps now you can check as you have the sensible heat factor or the sensible heat factor lower from 1 to 0.63 you will see the inclination is increasing which is showing that the amount of latent heat or moisture removal is increasing there is a reduction in the sensible heat factor uh, sensible heat to be removed and the latent heat to be removed or the moisture content to be removed is increasing and that's why that slant and you will find you can conclude that the same space sensible load air flow rate will be higher for the higher eshf and lower for lower eshf let me clarify this if you have a x as a sensible heat to be removed sensible load and you have one as a sensible heat factor which means the line is horizontal so you get effectively the temperature difference from this point 
to this point. That is your delta T available for the heat pickup from the space, which means in your air quantity calculation, you will use this as the dehumidified rise. So in the calculations, you will check, you will find that this is going in the denominator, which means for the same sensible load space, you will have to pump in higher air quantity. Whereas if you have the sensible heat ratio lower, which means the component of the latent heat is more, then you get a higher delta T available for the sensible heat pickup. And then the amount of air to be recirculated or supplied to the space will be lower. So that is the effect on the air quantity, the effect of the sensible heat factor. Now this is taken from the software, the room design conditions one to six. I have selected the same driver temperature, but relative humidity is different. So here you see the room design one, two, three, four, five, six. It tells you the driver temperature of 76 throughout. And the relative humidity is coming from 60, 55, 50. So you see the relative humidity values here. Then you will see the dew point temperature. Here you see the dew point temperature. So this is corresponding to the moisture content. You go horizontally to the saturation line. So that is the DP line, which we had seen in the previous skeleton charts. So for this room design condition, say six, room design condition six, your dew point of the air is 46.4. So that will be the line which will be meeting here, 46.4. Which means if you want to achieve this room design condition, your air which is being supplied to the space has to be at a dew point temperature or the moisture content corresponding to these values which means you will have to remove a lot of moisture to make sure that you have the correct supply air condition to the space. As you go with the higher humidity, you are allowed to operate at a slightly higher dew point temperature. So higher dew point temperature will give you benefit in the refrigeration system, but will give you disadvantage in the air flow rate of the air element. The image is showing the room design again, one to six with the off coil condition, assuming 100% coil efficiency. So it is showing the room design conditions from 76, 60 to 35% RH, and all plotted for effective sensitivity factor of one. So you will see the temperature difference is lower here, delta T for the heat pickup compared to this. So it can be concluded that for the same space sensible load, air flow rate will be higher for the higher room RH. If you want to maintain higher room RH, which is say 60% or 55%. When we say higher, we are always comparing with something which is lower. So if I take the lowest and the highest, you see the kind of delta T available for the two. So practically halfway, which means the air quantity will be practically double if you want to maintain 60% as against 35%. That's the moral of the story. Now let's look at the air constants which are commonly used or popularly used. So it shall be noted that the HC and R industry is using inch pound units as against SI metric, which is used by most of the industries. I have already Mention the reason American industry's influence. Yes, we we'll have to live with that. For ease of calculations in the psychrometric analysis, air constants have been derived. So there are constants being derived which are used left, right, center. Yes, but how they are derived, let's try and understand. So these air constants are used for calculating the sensible heat of the air, latent heat of the air, total heat of the air. What I mean here is by the air flow rate and then we calculate that value and the supplier quantity to the space. 
no commonly used abbreviations in hvac industry air flow rate is always mentioned or synonymous or used cfm so they will not say air flow rate they will say cfm cfm which is quick fit per minute water flow rate will be always gpm so when they are talking about water flow rate they will use the unit instead of saying that it's a water flow rate which is gpm us gallons there is also imperial gallon which is higher than this but in this industry we are using us gpm and refrigeration or heat removal capacity rate of heat removal is tons of refrigeration which is 12000 btu per hour or it could be kilowatts if it is a si metric all of these units are convertible between ip and si but commonly used abbreviations are this and how to get these constants now let's look at this derivation of the air constants 1.08 is the constant used for sensible heat when you see the carrier system heat load calculation form you will find this number mentioned there 1.08 you will also find this 0.68 as a number mentioned for the latent loads and 4.45 for the total heat so here is the explanation 0.244 is the specific heat of moist air at this condition then this is the conversion 60 which is 60 minutes in 1 hour because we are talking about btu per hour so you'll have to calculate the cfm or the cubic feet per minute you'll have to make sure that it is converted to per hour so you'll have to take the rate for 60 minutes which is equal to 1 hour so that's why this 60 has come and then 13.5 is the specific volume of the moist air at that temperature 70 degrees fahrenheit and 50 percent so that is taken as the mean or the center point or the most common of the two ends of the ac system temperatures required and that is what is the standardization if you see this 1.08 in carrier method when you go to ashray method you will find this constant as 1.1 latent heat in a similar manner you have taken 60 minutes to 1 hour specific volume and this 1076 is the average heat removal required to condense 1 pound of water vapor from the room air so this 1076 is the uh, heat removal requirement and this is the grains per pound so 7000 is the grains per pound to simplify this it is like unit when you are talking about distance between say pune and mumbai you are talking about in kilometers but when you are talking about room dimensions we talk in meters they are all equal like when i say meters i can always convert it to kilometers or vice versa same way the grain is a smaller when you are dealing with the smaller numbers otherwise you will end up in 0.004 or 006 and then there are possibilities of error in the calculations so to minimize that possibility we use the smaller unit this is 7000 grains per pound if it is ip system you will use 1000 grams per kilogram and when we are talking about the total heat capacity we are just using that 60 and 13.5 which is a specific volume because we are converting the cubic feet per minute and that is the way the constants are derived similar style you can use whether as ray method the concept remains same now let's go to the system a bit now that's a typical Uh, i would say these are all olympic circles of air conditioning system we have five circles where the heat transfer loops are the first loop you see is the air which is your conditioned space you are having a supplier fan circulating the air which is passing over the coil getting cooled and humidified being pumped in back to the space again picking up heat and going back so that is your supplier fan after cooling coil you have a chill water loop you have a refrigeration loop you have the condenser then the heat removal back to there so the above diagram is explaining the interrelated heat transfer loops from the space being air conditioned which is here to the ambient which is the heat sink now important thing to note is 
cooling coil is the only system component or that is the apparatus which will differentiate the sensible and latent heat of the space which is being removed once it goes to this coil and then to the chill water and the refrigeration that is all getting as a total heat there is no more di differentiation between sensible and latent it's only at the coil that this differentiation will occur now we'll quickly look at the air handling unit system so this is the space to be conditioned when we are talking about the air handling unit system you have various components you have this humidifier you have the heating coil cooling coil preheat coil then you have filters and you have a recirculation so you have the entire recirculation outdoor air discharge air extract air so that is a, a small sketch or a scheme where we are talking about the room you have the infiltration air transfer air coming from adjoining spaces so that's the apparatus so the air handling unit is the basic piece of equipment used in air system it can be either field assembled or factory made because the central system always has a chill water system type of coil is chill water cooling coil and that's what is this chill water coil the idea of this is just to get a hang of a system similar arrangement here so what we are talking about is pumping in the air into this we are calling this as a supply air so the room is representing the space to be air conditioned which is here interconnecting ducts are conveying the air to and from the space to be conditioned the circle numbers are the specific points on the psychrometric chart for analysis so whatever you see one means this is the outdoor air condition two is the return air then one and two getting mixed you have this mixed air condition passing over this removal or cooling coil then this is off coil condition then if you have the heater to be arranged so that is where your psychrometric process will come and this air system is including these components which are shown here so this is showing the circulation of air with the properties of air identified on the uh, specific locations which are being measured so when we are talking about the air conditioning system we are using air as a cooling medium we are mixing this with the space or the volume of the space which is being air conditioned and that is the associated process so in every air conditioning system that is provided to cater to the air conditioning space the volume of the conditioned air in the space is continuously getting mixed with the volume of air which is being pumped to the conditioned space and this pumped into the space is called as a treated or a cooled and humidified air or it is also called a supply air when we say cooled or humidified cooled and humidified this is what is your air conditioning process and you are determining from the room design condition and the sensible heat factor and assuming the coil efficiency what should be the ideal supply air point so the quality of the treated air is identified with the dry bulb temperature and humidity ratio whereas the quantity of the treated air is the flow rate in cfm or cmh and the cooling capacity of the system is derived from these parameters which are listed above the sensible cooling is dictated by the change in dry bulb and latent cooling is dictated by change in humidity ratio now as per the ashray recommendations how to decide the living capacity or the living apparatus condition so that is what we saw few slides back 90% arrh so in the carrier cooling load estimation procedure bypass factor is assumed based on the application however coil bypass factor is dictated by the coil number of rows phase velocity and number of pins and the number of rows of the coil are to be selected based on the sensible heat ratio when the cooling load is estimation is done a re verification of the correctness of the bypass factor has to be done but this rarely happens in reality you can use ashray method or carrier method depends on the specific application or the project but both have their uh, specific guidance how the calculations are done 
now this is psychrometric process for calculations so you have the room design the sensible heat factor line the coil efficiency so that is where you decide for this room design and for that room sensible heat factor based on the coil performance what should be the supply air condition so once you know the supply air condition and the room design what is the delta t and the delta w you know what is the latent pickup and the sensible pickup and you will have to check this with the required space calculated values and then decide the amount of air which is the calculation which you are doing for the air handling unit capacity selection now that's the mixture of outside air and return air most common so you have outside air and that is the conditioned space you have the return air coming from the space getting mixed with the outdoor air and the mixture is processed over the cooling coil and supplied to the space so that is the supply the quality of this has to be decided by the mixture condition and what is your desired adp based on your sensible effect so what is being done in the condition space is undone in the coil or what is being done in the cooling coil gets undone in the condition space the way it is you will see the outside air here you know the air quantity outside air what cfm we are giving return from the room you will assume the room design itself as return air at times if the return air passage is long you will have to add certain sensible heat to that to get the correct value before it mixes then you calculate the mixture you know the condition of the mixture depending on the proportion of return and outdoor air you pass it over the coil using the sensible heat factor and then you supply to this room which means you supply at this point and it is cool enough to pick up the room sensible heat and dry enough to pick up the latent heat that's what i uh, mentioned in the previous slide so this is a typical air conditioning app application where you are using the outdoor air and return air and mixture is passed over the coil if you have 100% recirculating air as this there is no fresh air added what is the condition space air picked up passed over the cooling coil and supplied no addition of fresh air which means you are supplying from the return air and the room is same so it goes over the coil and comes back recirculation no fresh air added whereas if it is 100% fresh air there is no return air added that means you are treating the entire outdoor air and supplying to the space and leaving it so that is the sensible heat ratio line parallel to that passing through the room and that's where the 90% rh line is this is ashray style so it is assuming that the coil will saturate it up to 100% uh, 90% and that's the point taken for the air leaving the apparatus or the supply air finish this is all outdoor air which we saw 100% fresh air over coil gets here and then that is exhausted the same uh, chart shown here this is the mixture what we have seen before and that is a psychrometric process which we have already seen so we have a mixture of return and outdoor air mixture condition going over the coil and supplier being supplied at that 90% rh from the coil air is a cooling medium as we said the image on left is showing the psychrometric chart with the supply air and room design conditions supply air and room design conditions for the given air flow rate or cfm the sensible and latent heat pickup capacity of the air is worked out now i am going the opposite way what i am saying here is i am supplying air at this moisture content and drivable temperature so there is the leaving coil condition supply air condition and i am supplying x air quantity or x cfm 
so i want to calculate how much capacity this air x quantity at that condition has to reach the room design of what your your 75 74 how much heat because you have calculated the room sensible heat you have calculated the room latent heat and now you have decided the condition of the supplier and you have decided the air flow rate using these parameters you calculate what will be the resultant room condition because it has to pick up that given room sensible heat but said the quantity depending on that air quantity you will work out the delta t you know the temperature of the air being supplied to the space so you add that delta t to the room temperature uh, the space uh, supplier temperature for that given space sensible load you will be able to compute the room resultant temperature then check whether it is falling within the acceptable tolerance if it is design conditions specified as say 73 plus minus 2 whether the resultant is falling within that acceptable or not same way you are supplying that air at a quality of the moisture content of so much the room latent you have worked out you know the air quantity so that much air quantity how much latent will be added how much moisture will be added and what will be the resultant room moisture level and is it falling within the specified limit so you are getting this resultant values based on your selected capacity then if it is falling within the acceptable limits with the tolerances for all the spaces you do not anticipate any problem but if there are some spaces where you have these resultant rooms conditions falling outside you may have to take some corrective action locally you may have to either increase the air quantity because you cannot change the uh, supply condition because it is coming from the common air handling unit so you have to play with the air quantity only for given space there may be some spaces having higher sensible loads then you have to deal with that locally by giving additional air in the design so that is the repetition of the computation of these constants why i have repeated is here the concept is different we are saying that i will be supplying this air at this drivable band humidity or moisture content and then i am supplying so much of air quantity as cfm or the air flow rate and i know the room loads sensible and latent and then i have computed the resultant room it's opposite of the design just to validate or verify whether with this system i'll be able to achieve the desired results or not this is for the total air which you have seen before this is again the repetition of the mixing most of the ac systems designed with this recirculation mixing and cooling coil is treating this so i am repeating the statement the supply air has to be cool enough to pick up the sensible load that means your drivable temperature of the supply air has to be low enough that once it picks up the sensible load of the space the resultant temperature has to be within the acceptable or ideally the design parameter the tolerances plus minus are generally for the control systems performance then it has to be dry enough to pick up the latent load so you must make sure that your supply air conditions are right to meet the space loads sensible and latent for all the spaces ideally since you are having a common air handling unit now this is the same skeleton chart here you will find three different sensible heat factors one is a grand sensible heat factor one is the effective sensible heat factor and one is the room sensible heat factor all of them have different slopes and different starting points so this is passing through the room design because it is room sensible heat factor and effective room sensible heat factor whereas 
mixture is grand sensory factor so when we say grand room and effective when you see the carrier e20 form all these factors you will be able to get an idea what these factors are and this is the adp temperature which is given in the table t adp and you have to join this t adp with the mixture condition with the sensible heat factor here and then that is the bypass factor of the coil which we said we have to tally again that's a saturation line so the skeleton is showing room design condition which is here outdoor design which is here the conditions of the mixture entering depending on the proportion of this here it is 50 50 so it is half way there apparatus dew point temperature which is selected from the adp chart and the sensible heat factor and then you get this bypass factor for the coil and you get the ideal condition which is here so if you supply the air at this condition it will have a capacity to pick up the room sensible as well as let because it is following on this sensible heat factor line so once it picks up the sensible and latent it will end in this provided you have done the calculation right for the air quantity cfm same parameters repeated for the cooling and humidification with the numbers here for the calculation this is from the example we are not having enough time to go and solve an example but these are the values which which tell you okay this is how the calculations are done so you take the room design temperature outdoor design temperature air flow rate calculated for the dew point rise which is indicated and then with the sensible heat factors you calculate the adp and the coil so that is a living air condition for the apparatus so this is how you select the equipment we are seeing this the table is indicating the apparatus dew point as a function of the room design conditions and effective sensible heat factors cooling load estimation form is used to calculate the eshf after the completion of this quantity of air is calculated and the air constants are used so these tables are available for different room design temperatures i have taken this as sample but if you see the isre data book you will find different room design conditions available and with the range of relative humidity so you pick up the correct table from the uh, data book and then use these factors and compare and compute the capacities based on the requirements this is a repetition of the chart because most of the times you will find the same chart the moment we talk about psychrometric analysis you will get this only thing is understanding the sensible heat factor which is telling you the proportion of sensible to latent and the effect on the adp and the further system parameters operating which is like your refrigerant temperature or the chill water temperature what could be the limitation we need to understand and make the analysis the same factors with these values added so this is bypass factor and this is one minus bypass factor sometimes this one minus bypass factor will be called as a contact factor so it is the efficiency of the coil or the performance of the coil ideally you should reach the saturation line which we do not reach because of the coil inefficiency it may go up to 95% 90% of the coil design but there is a inefficiency part which is identified and reflected here in calculation what it does in effect is that much reduction in the effective value which means you are enhancing or increasing the amount of air being supplied to the space just to make sure that this coil inefficiency part is taken care of if you have any questions please let yes, me sir yeah uh, so thank you sir for this wonderful session it was really an enriching session i could not even say a word in between because i was so much engrossed in your presentation for throughout the whole two one and a two hours almost two hours the time just went by uh, i you. have a question 
I have a question yeah. from Mr. Yogesh Chavan. Uh, there is only one question. I would request other participant also to either raise their hands or give uh, questions in the chat box so that we can address yes. them. So, yeah. so there is a question from Mr. Mr. Yogesh Chavan. He is saying yes. that there is a criteria of difference between the supply air temperature, return air temperature should not be greater than 15 degree Fahrenheit. What is the reason behind that criteria? Between the supply and return? Yes, uh, between the supply air temperature and the return air temperature, the difference should not be more than 15 degrees Fahrenheit. What is the reason behind that criteria? I have never seen such a requirement unless it's a specification. When we say return air, it is generally the room air, same we are assuming that it is going as a return air. If you have a return air duct connecting the space to the uh, air handling unit, and you are, you are expecting some temperature rise, you allow that as a return air gain and adjust the room temperature, you add that delta T and what is entering the coil is taken at a higher value. So that becomes an additional load on the system as well as it changes the air entering the coil condition. It will not be the return air. But I have not seen anywhere that return air and uh, supply air a difference being specified because when you see large spaces, you are supplying the air at a temperature of something like 12 degrees or 13 degrees Celsius. And you may be having a room design of 22, 24. So that delta D itself is 10 degrees, which is more than 15. It is 18, 20. And there are some spaces just to reduce the amount of air being supplied, they want to operate at a lower temperature, supply temperature, because the amount of air being supplied to the space can be drastically reduced. If you increase the delta T by 20%, you can reduce the air quantity by almost 80%, which means your duct sizes can be reduced, the space required for the ducts can be reduced. And there is a tendency to, in fact, supply the temperature at, the supply temperature at lower, which means but I have not seen anywhere the uh, specification of 15 degrees as a limiting value. We have higher uh, uh, temperature differences. If there is anything specific in the uh, consultant's design, which has called for this criteria, uh, I would be happy to know and clarify if any. Great, sir. Thank you, sir, for clarity, clarifying that. We have a few other questions uh, in this uh, platform. Uh, one is from a student member who has joined today's session to understand the basics of psychometry. And he has asked is that, uh, that why the enthalpy of humid air remains constant along a wet bulb temperature on the psychometric charge? So if you can just... No, it does it. not. It, okay. That's what I clarified. Uh, there is an assumption by many HVAC uh, engineers that wet bulb line and enthalpy line are concurrent. It is assumed, uh, but it is not true. When you see the psychrometric chart, you will find that there is a deviation of the enthalpy line, especially at higher temperatures. See what happens is when you have the air and vapor or water vapor, moisture, mixture, the amount of heat contained by the dry air component of the mixture is so low because your CP or the specific heat for the air is very low. So for the given volume or flow rate, the amount of specific, uh, the amount of heat content, which is the enthalpy. So when you look at the psychrometric chart, you look at zero moisture content, which is the baseline where you have the dry bulb values, you go for any dry bulb temperature and take the enthalpy line. That will be the enthalpy of the dry air. And you go for the moisture content or the W humidity ratio on the vertical axis. The proportion of the heat content by the moisture to the uh, specific heat means the uh, sensible heat component of the dry air it will outweigh. And that's why the wet bulb or the moisture content dictates the enthalpy is an assumption. It is not a 100% correct assumption, but the reason is 
when you take uh, the air and water vapor mixture as a total you take uh, cp for air you take the mass of air and the temperature and take that as a component and take the moisture content and the uh, boiled or that 1076 uh, btu added to that because water has become the water vapor so it is superheated uh, kind of uh, water condition so that amount of heat content in the moisture to the uh, specific heat or the uh, heat content by the dry air the weightage is more on the moist moisture uh, heat content that's why many times what they do is they neglect the amount of heat or enthalpy content by the dry air but when you take the calculations we are expected to take the mixture the dry air as well as the uh, moisture content so both components we need to take and that's where the difference uh, comes at higher temperatures because at higher temperatures since the t value is high the heat content becomes higher even for the air having the cp very low does it clarify you thank you sir i hope it has clarified the question the raised by our student member uh, we have a few questions in line sir uh, i'll just address them one by one we have yeah. a question from mr pravin singh he is asking that in case of lower adp required in case of chilled water system how should we do that first of all we need to understand there are some spaces where you have lower adp which is dictated by the space now your chilled water system design many times what i have seen is a thumb rule is followed without giving due consideration to the special requirements now what i had seen in some systems where we came up with adp requirement lower because the space was demanding and uh, personally i feel that each space should be given its due respect and that's the reason we need to do each room analysis at least each space and if you are giving a common air handling unit or a common chilled water system you have two possibilities one is adjust the air quantities if you are having a common air handling unit in such a way that you are able to deal with the sensible heat anticipated but since your dew point or the leaving air moisture content remains same and if that happens to be higher for a particular space then you have to treat that space separately many industrial applications we come up across such situations that's the reason we have to first calculate the loads find out what is the uh, space sensible heat factor what is the adp required and then make a tabular form of all the spaces and unfortunately what happens is those spaces which require lower adp happen to be very critical spaces especially in manufacturing plants and if you are not able to meet that then uh, we are not done our engineering properly so each space has to be treated on its merit and if you have a lower adp than which can be achieved by the chilled water system if you have a chilled water system and the design temperature is say 6.7 or 6.2 just lowering that chilled water temperature for one space the entire system of the chilled water uh, generation becomes uneconomical so it is easier or uh, economical to treat that space separately and see if you can give a smaller dx plant which you will have a better control on adp we have seen many uh, installations especially when you have a high latent heat uh, spaces there are some drying areas where you have a lot of moisture load latent load the latent or uh, the sensible heat factor in one of our applications had come to 0.52 and when we uh, plot that sensible heat factor line it was not even meeting the saturation curve so that kind of challenges do come so selection of adp is one and chill water that's why when you have a common system you must be careful of such special systems and 
there are there is a tendency of lowering the temperature of the chilled water from 45 to 42 but it taxes the refrigeration system it becomes more expensive and the tendency will be that just for one space i am not going to change the entire design but if you have identified such spaces you have to give them due respect and give a independent system we had cases where they were looking for uh, in fact one uh, uh, application in nasik where they had a winery store they wanted 16 degrees as the room temperature and then for 16 degrees room temperature if i supply air at 12 degrees you have only 4 degrees delta t to pick up for the given load the amount of air to be pumped in is so high which does not make sense it doesn't become economical so we have to be careful we have to treat them on its merit yes but it is important to know that what is the required adp and that's the reason i try to explain right sir thank you so much uh, we have another question it's yeah. from mr milan sardesai he is asking yes. what is the similarity and difference between the chill water and dx system when one has to carry out the design conditions so we can just briefly explain on that sir if you are already having a large uh, installation and chill water becomes the uh, what we say the correct method then you can use chill water system but the moment you are talking about chill water system you are introducing a intermediate coolant which means there will be a change in the efficiency dx systems has their own advantages disadvantages if you have a cooling unit or the air handling unit located remote and the refrigerant piping happens to be long you could have problems of oil return you could have limitations on the refrigerant line but personally i am of the opinion that if you design the system correctly then there is nothing uh, that can go wrong we have to give due credit or uh, consideration for the possible uh, problems but dx and chilled water so the moment you say chilled water system your operating temperatures are dictated by the uh, water freezing point so if you have uh, low temperature applications you cannot use chilled water you have to go for dx system thank you sir uh, we will move on to the next question we will take 5 more minutes to answer this question because a lot of questions have come in and frankly speaking we don't have such much time to address all those but i'll to try to go through them briefly so that each question Or, is answered uh, i properly. also suggest one thing what you can do is you can get these on emails from them right sir and uh, consolidate the whole uh, query and hmm. send it to me and whenever i get time i will try to answer and send it back to you uh, one by one but i would like to have more questions so i will get an opportunity to learn myself sure sir so i'll request all the participants who with whose questions i will not be able to attend today i'll just if if seen from here i'll just write my mail id just yes. uh, mail me here yeah so that i can address these questions and give it to sir i'll move on to the next question before i just yeah, write my yeah, yeah. Uh, he, mr augustine has asked how to stop fungal growth on false ceiling due to air conditioning system so if you could address that how to stop fungal, fungal growth, growth in false ceiling the fungal growth uh, will be observed in surfaces which become damp now the surface will become damp when you have a condens condensation of moisture and condensation of moisture happens once you have a stagnant air a surface which is at a temperature lower than the dew point of the air and moisture so when you have all these three fellows together you have a damp surface and if you have that damp surface as a organic material like a canvas cloth typically or any material which has a organic origin in such condition is definitely going to have fungus so if you have a moisture content not controlled and that's why you will find so many books written 
on uh, moisture control and that is the biggest challenge the hvac engineer has there are antifungal paints available but that is a remedy like you are having a headache you take a solid on you are not removing the cause you are only removing the effect to prevent condensation or the fungus growth humidity control is important so there are articles there are books my suggestion is have a look at the spaces and you will find this fungus growth in corners where you don't have good air movement and you will have some black spots on uh, clothing or the uh, uh, we used to have this system for uh, insulation treatment we used to have a canvas cloth painted with some uh, anti fungal treatment so anti fungal treatment helps but not solve the problem right sir we'll move on to the next question uh, mr salwan yeah. said has asked if the coil sensible capacity is met and exceeded as per the load calculation can we maintain 24 degrees c inside the room with a living air db temperature of 16 degrees c if not why no uh, going by the numbers in isolation will not be helpful you have 16 degrees c as a supply air condition and if the moisture content at 16 degrees is going to harm the humidity level in the room you have to check because at times uh, like you will see in mumbai even though the temperature is 30 32 when the humidity level is 80 plus you will be uncomfortable so if you are talking about a comfort condition at 24 degrees c you look at the percentage rh and go horizontally on the dew point temperature and find out at 16 degrees what will be the moisture content and in the latest ashray guide or the recommendation for the comfort conditions not not only the uh, temperatures are mentioned they have also mentioned the dew point temperature of the air at 62 or uh, fahrenheit i think that is the value so you have to check and if it is purely the sensible load and 16 is a temperature so so long as you are supplying the air at temperature lower than the room say 24 so between 24 and 16 you definitely have a delta t available 24 minus 16 so based on the load you calculate the amount of air to be supplied that's not an issue It means instead of supplying at 16 you can even supply at 21 only difference will be you have only 3 degrees delta t and your supplier quantity will become enormous but technically supplying at 16 and maintaining 24 there is no problem provided you have done the load calculation sensible calculated correctly and then decided the amount of air to be supplied right sir we'll move on to the next question uh, mr gunjan kumar has asked how how humidified quantity of air is impacting the equipment overall tr for any dx system how one selected system is taking care of the seasonal variation uh, no when you said the selected uh, humidified quantity he is asking how hum- he uh, how dehumidified quantity of air is impacting the equipment overall tr for any dx no, system see. overall capacity of the system will not be dictated by any of these it is when you are selecting the equipment you might be going to a standard model available generally what is done is we calculate the amount of air to be circulated or cal- calculate the total heat and then you always have this um, proportion of sensible and total now your equipment has to be selected carefully we have to make sure that we have enough sensible as well as enough latent capacity there are cases where sensible can be met but latent cannot be met in case of higher latent loads in that case you will have to go to the next equipment size which has the latent capacity because any one of the, that's what uh, was the statement in the carrier system design uh, at note for equipment selection the plant has to be selected to meet both sensible as well as latent capacity so when you are going for a standard unit as a selection you will have to check if there is any limitation it's like you are buying a ready made shirt versus a tailor made shirt 
you have to have some compromise if that is not accepted then you have to go for the higher capacity and then make sure that your control system can regulate that thank you sir uh, we'll move on to the next question uh, this is the last question of this today uh, it is from mr prasad natraj he is asking does independent pressure control valves have any added support in reducing power consumption in chill water system i think we are <coughs> going to the system design means <laughs> it's not that we cannot answer but the question is relevant whenever we are talking about uh, controlling the air sup or supply air quality we always have this problem how the coil behaves how the chill water is controlled and how that is responding to the overall system we have seen consultants say, saying that you double the chill water flow to the coil and you should get double the uh, capacity it doesn't happen that way we we'll have to check the coil capacity so same way the valve also we we'll have to check the characteristics you have to see how it behaves with the differential and what will be the performance it will give what i suggest or request is get that query in a bit detail i'll see if i can uh, put more light on no that issues because it has got a different uh, approach to be taken no issues sir uh thank you sir again for giving us this wonderful lecture today we ex we have learned a lot today actually and uh, we hope each and every participant has been benefited for today's event yes sir my only my only concern was uh, there was no possibility of taking any examples or giving any examples or exercises which we would have done in a physical classroom right sir so what we'll do sir if time permits uh, after a few days we'll try to hold another session with just calculations and examples so that that can be an interactive session with the participants and it can be attended on a much larger extent uh, let us I plan think it for it is a bit difficult to give the example and see how things are being done but uh, they may have to get their live examples if they have any uh, design means ongoing jobs they can do the calculations and find out themselves uh, with the load calculations because it, even that load calculation form uh, the reason for that was to identify okay what are the components which uh, lead you to the equipment selection because just knowing the properties of air doesn't help it is only half <laughs> half cook uh, material <laughs> right sir. yeah so thank you again uh, for giving us this presentation uh, we look forward to having more sessions with you in the upcoming days uh, to all the My members pleasure. this is uh, this is a start of a technical series that youth initiative has taken in initiative we will be covering all yeah we will be covering sir all the basic parameters of hvc system design and integration and everything it will be uh, panned out for entire the entirety of the year with various topics and uh, we will be trying to educate all those uh, all those parameters separately and i would be requesting govind sir's help also in the future days to come and uh, looking forward to other participation members participation also in the days to come so again sir thank you so much for your time and look forward My sir pleasure. My for pleasure. other events in fact uh, the entire sivaraman college uh, center of excellence curriculum or syllabus i right, was sir. associated with them to prepare the contents and all that right so sir i am very happy to share it with you that will be great sir great sir thank you thank you again sir thank you everybody Thanks. and have a good night thank you so thank you Bye. ajal ji uh, you can close this event okay sir